Hello, probability and statistics students. This is Ms. Diener. We're starting chapter nine, which is correlation and regression. 9.1, we're starting with correlation. Um, it's gonna be a condensed version of 9.1. So correlation is a relationship between two variables. The data can be represented by ordered pairs, which you write the X first and then the Y, where your X is the independent variable and Y is the dependent variable. Okay, so you knew that from algebra, um, but we do have some new vocabulary terms. So explanatory variable is the X, response variable is the Y. A scatter plot can be used to determine whether a linear correlation exists between two variables. So linear means that a good fit would be if we could draw a straight line through it. And here's an example of some data where I have X's listed with Y's. And we could plot each one of those five points on our scatter plot. Okay. So remember, your x's are going across, the y's go up and down. So to plot the point 1, negative 4 from the origin, we move over 1 unit, down 4. To plot 2, negative 2, we go over 2, down 2. 3, negative 1, 4, 0, 5, up 2. Okay, so now we're going to look at different examples of scatter plots. Um, here we're looking at a scatter plot where we have negative linear correlation. Okay, because if I was to draw a straight line the best that I could through this data, it would have a negative slope. And you'll see that as your x increases or we're moving further to the right, y tends to decrease because the y, as you're moving farther to the right, is going down. Positive linear correlation. As your x increases, your y also tends to increase. Okay, so as we move further to the right, the height of the points goes up. So as x goes up, so does y. Another example I've got points all over the place. Um, it really doesn't make sense to draw a line through these points. This is no correlation. And our final scatter plot that we'll look at on this slide. Um, it looks like we could probably draw an upside down parabola here, but that is not a straight line. So this is nonlinear correlation. And we're going to be focusing on linear correlation. All right, so now it's time to talk about your correlation coefficient. And this formula here just popped up, but don't let it scare you because I'm gonna bring you to a website that will let you easily calculate your correlation coefficient. So your correlation coefficient is a measure of the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. The symbol R represents the sample correlation coefficient. Okay, so yes, we do have this formula here, but I'm going to bring you to a website which will let you calculate R. The range of your correlation coefficient is negative 1 to positive 1. Okay, and that's inclusive. So R can be negative 1 or positive 1 or anything in between. If X and Y have a strong positive linear correlation, then R is going to be close to positive 1. If X and Y have a strong linear correlation, negative, sorry, if X and Y have a strong negative linear correlation, R is going to be close to negative 1. If there is no correlation, 
or a weak linear correlation, the R value is going to be close to zero. Okay, so again, we're going to be looking at some examples of scatter plots. Um, in this scatter plot, I can see that I have a strong negative correlation because I would draw a line through these points and it would have a negative slope. And an example of what the correlation coefficient R would be, would be negative 0 0.91. Okay, so that's close to negative 1, which is representing a strong negative correlation. Over here, if I was to draw a line through these points, it would have a positive slope. And the points would be pretty close to the line. This is representing an R value or a correlation coefficient of positive 0 0.88. Okay, so again, this is a strong positive correlation because your R is close to positive 1. Now we're looking at an example of positive correlation because as x is increasing, y is also increasing. But if we drew a straight line through this data, the points would be farther from the line. Um, so there's more variation going on here. And this would be an example of a weak positive correlation. R is positive 0.42. So we're getting closer to zero. And the closer you get to zero, the weaker the relationship is between your x and y. And finally, here we're looking at nonlinear correlation. The points are like just all over the place. Um, so because it doesn't look like we have a relationship between x and y, r is really close to 0, 0 0.07. OK, so we're going to do an example. The following data represents the number of hours 12 different students watched television during the weekend and the scores of each student who took a test the following Monday. Okay, so we've got the x's are the hours. So that's your explanatory variable or the independent variable. And here we have the y's, which are test scores. So that's your response variable or your dependent variable. And each one of these ordered pairs is representing one student. For example, this student spent zero hours watching television over the weekend. And on Monday, that student earned a 96 on their test. This student, well, that's not a great example. Um, this student spent five hours watching TV over the weekend. And it looks like they earned a 76 on the test. This student spent 10 hours watching TV and earned a 50. So we're going to put that data onto a scatter plot. Um, again, it's going to be important that you get the hours, the x's, on your x-axis, and that the test scores are going on the y-axis. Okay, so let's take a look at the scatter plot. Okay, so here are hours watching TV. Here are the test scores. Okay, we need to calculate a correlation coefficient for the data. And let's just look back here for a second. It looks like there is a negative correlation as X is increasing. So as the number of TV hours are increasing, it looks like the test scores, your Ys, are decreasing. Um, so I would expect R, the correlation coefficient, to be negative. And R is negative 0 0.831. 